Hi everyone, we're going to be looking at printf statements and scanf statements. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. So first of all, I want to briefly go over comments, but then we're going to look at printf and scanf. And we're not going to be looking at cout and cn. Cout and cn would be used in the textbook extensively. And I want to just give a warning in advance. If this is something very specific for this whole fall COVID-19 thing, because it will be so tempting, let's say, to cheat. We want some ways of making sure that you didn't just grab a bunch of code online. And it just happens to turn out that most people, when they learn C and C++, they sort of learn it together, and they don't know where C stops and where C++ picks up. I still have little problems every once in a while, and I know it relatively well. C and C++ are different languages but people will write something in C that they think is C, but it's actually part of it C++. They'll have some C++, they'll have some C, there's some kind of overlap. It is purely a C++ program at that time. You cannot put it on an embedded chip or something like that if you need a pure C, but people will code it that way anyways. It also means if you're doing something like C out and CN, there is a whole bunch of magic secret sauce in there. C out and CN looks like nothing, nothing else that you look at in C because it's not C, it's C++. And as a result, it means that if I start seeing C out and C ins, or if I start seeing news and deletes, or if I start seeing, um, let me think of some other examples, um, bool, there's a number of C++ specific syntax and C++ specific functions that we're not gonna be discussing. And if they end up popping up in your exam, and we didn't talk about it during the year, and you were supposed to have learned it, um, well, then it presumably means either you got this, you already knew how to code this, and I'm telling you to not do that, and you're not listening to my instructions, or it means you're grabbing the code online. In both of those cases, we're going to cheat it, treat it as an academic integrity violation, and it could be you could be reported immediately. This is not for like a little, little minor things. It is. I, it's going to look really fishy if I start seeing C out and C in statements in your exams or on your assignments. So get out of the habit of C out and C in, even if you know how to use it, you should be able to try multiple different things. So we've already looked a little bit at casting, but let's just a quick reminder. Uh, there are lots of ways to cast things. So I could cast 2.3 to an integer. And what that's going to do in this case is it's going to clip it off at the point three and just I will be the value two. It is going to clip my de my value because I can't have a floating point number as an integer. Um, in some cases, it will change the number. In some cases, it will not change the number at all. So going from an unsigned int to a signed int, the bits underlying it all are exactly the same. We looked at that as a demonstration. And So go back to the previous uh, lecture if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you are looking at floating points to integers, it will change. The underlying bits will change. But all we are doing, for, for our case at least, if we need to go, if we need to change the, the format of the data to one form to another, we're going to do this sort of old school casting method. We just put what we want it to be in parentheses in front. So David Sprague, if I want it to be a chair pointer, that's what that thing is, char star. I will just drop that right in front. And then now I have a name. By the way, the reason we, you're going to see, you might end up seeing this in the lab. The reason this is a constant character. Normally in C and in C++, if I have a just a hard-coded string, you are saying, no, 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 it's not something I can change. I cannot change the name from David Sprite to Susan or something like that. It is something that is hard-coded. It is constant. I'm not allowed to modify this string, just like you cannot modify the value 2.3 to some other value, right? You could change a variable, but I cannot change a hard-coded number like this. I cannot change a hard-coded text string like this. And so sometimes I need it to be a character string 
but I'm definitely not allowed to change this. And so being able to cast ends up being useful some of the times. You might hit this for the assignments or for the tutorials. If I need a character when I have an integer, I could just say, nope, nope, it's not an integer, it's character. Casting it, the value 60 to a particular letter. This will come up over and over again to the point that when we hit malloc, when we hit dynamic memory, we'll be doing this every single time I call malloc. Every single time I make a new array, or I make a yeah, new dynamic array in this case, I'm going to be using a cast. So we just have to get used to it. If I have the data in one format, I can convert it to another format by just saying what the format I want it to be in is. And so if you hit that problem in an assignment late at night, this is the workaround. You just put parentheses and what the heck you want the format to be in. All right. So here's our comments section. And this is actually how you make a comment. One of the ways you can make a comment in C, the double slash, right? So comments, just to be very, very clear, comments do not change your code. And so a lot of times, especially beginner students or students that have been programming without any kind of rigor, let's say, have looked at comments there. What's the point of comments? My code works. And you go, well, because they're not for the compiler. They're not for you at this moment. Your comments are for you and for the TAs and for myself or for anyone else that's reading your code. So they're intended for people. They indicate the purpose of the program. They indicate the purpose of a variable. If things are really complex, you want to say what you're doing. Because I didn't believe people when I was learning to code, and you're not going to believe me now. But four months later, when you look at your code again, or even two weeks later when you look at your code again, you're not going to remember what the heck you were doing that for. If it's complex at all, you're going to be like, what the hell was I thinking? Was I drunk at the time? Like, what? What is this thing? The, that's the reason we have comments. So when you go over it again, you go, oh, that's what I'm doing there. I'm sorting this array, then I'm doing this, then I'm doing that. It also allows you to put little to-dos or what you think each section is going to be. I can put comment, 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 what I plan to code, and then I fill in the code afterwards. It essentially just allows you as a human to process and deal with this big, nasty, complicated thing. If you were doing a math proof, putting little comments, I used to always swear by, you're doing a math proof, put a comment what the heck that part of the proof is doing so that other people understand it. Ma most people do not read math. Most people do not just read C. Some people do, but it's for humans to read. So they are ignored by the compiler, they're removed by the compiler, but they are not ignored by the TAs and the instructors, so please put them in there. For the, for the exam, you don't have that much time, but they're still appreciated. For an ex assignment, they're absolutely needed. If we can't figure out what you're trying to do, we can't give you points. And if it doesn't work, but you had comments, we can figure out, oh, you're, you're a little bit off. If we can't figure out what it does and there's no comments, we're not giving you squat. So please put in your comments. Um, by the way, and I will give tons of comments. One of my, it, maybe it's a character flaw on my part, but I will always give comments in my code. If I give you sample code, I will put comments of what this thing does. If you do not read them, you are not reading the instructions. It is just, it's that simple. You can't, I think it's the easiest way to tell you what the heck's going on is, here's the function I gave you, here's a comment, or here's the function I need you to fill in, here's a comment for what you need to do. Right there, versus in some other PDF file somewhere else when I have, where you have to track it down, right? You should, the comment is right where you need it right in the code where you're reading. So comments are in the code. Please make sure you read them. Uh, I'd like to point out you can put comments at the end of the line. For example, the length is 12, the, maybe the length in inches. If you if it's not uh, inherently clear that it's in inches, you might want to write that down so that people don't think it's centimeters. Right? Here is the calculated area. I would say you probably don't need the calculated area. right? More importantly, but if you need a little comment per variable, you can put that at the end of the line. More importantly, though, I never do this. I prefer, I definitely prefer this way down here. And there's a very good reason, and maybe some of you may have hit it already by looking at some of the code. 
it's called a line wrap. You've done this with other things. We've done it with looking at web pages that were designed poorly, whatever the case is. If I have too much text on a single line, like this thing here, or if I have a really long comment, the last thing I want is it to ever wrap around because it looks terrible. Somebody has a high resolution monitor, writes a big long sentence, and then you get your phone and you're looking at it and you're, it gets clipped after like five words. Or you look at it on a you know Chromebook and it gets clipped in no time. Any beyond, anything, there's actually a hard point. You can actually put this in Visual Studio where it'll be like about 80 characters. Normal, normally as an approximation for how big that's how long a line of text or how long any line of code should be. And so if you put it on the end of the line, you're going to get to 80 characters pretty darn quickly. So that's why I put it on the line above. If I want multiple lines, a multi-line comment, this will be a block comment. It starts with a star uh, slash star, it ends with a star slash. It's very useful if you want to clip out a big chunk of code but not delete it. So it's very useful in that respect. But I will caution one other problem. It doesn't nest. So I cannot do, let's do this. Uh, and then What's going to happen here is it's going to start here. It's going to end there. This part's come. Oh, darn it. Let's do. Un can I undo? No, I can't undo. I'm going to redo that whole thing. So. And slash star. It will be from here to here. This whole thing. will be the only thing in my comment. And then I have this free floating star slash afterwards. I can't nest these things. And so if I need to build on, you know, I have a comment up chunk and I want to put another comment on top of the comment, I can't do it with the star slash star slash star. Slash star star slash, right? So that's one reason why some people avoid these sorts of things from time to time. But if I want a big block of comment, this is just a subtlety here. If you put block comments, fantastic, go for it. I'm not going to pick on you at all. But if you ever see me put too many slashes, that's the reason. Okay. Up next, I want to, I'll do this as one in one go. We're going to look at printf statements and scanf statements, just how we input data. So what we were looking at last time, we looked at arithmetic, we looked at comments, we looked at functions briefly, and very, very soon we're going to be looking at functions a lot more. Uh, how we f input fun data into a function, take input out of a function, or take data out of a function. But for today, we're going to look at input and output messages to the user, which are in fact, oh wait, functions. So um, we also had some good comment uh, programming practices that we came along here. So when it comes to, because this is still related to function to comments, we normally make sure we have a hopefully good variable name like MB zombies for number of zombies, for example, uh, a counter, I, age. Um, average, whatever you want. Something that is short but meaningful. My var, my var 2 and all those things I've given other times, they're terrible names. Unless it's for some very generic example, no. A, B, C, no. Bad variable names. If you do not know what that variable is for, it should be named something different. If you cannot figure out why you have that variable and named that way, then you can refactor or consider it a different name. So. You maybe want, and you may want consistency. So first name starting with a lowercase value, last name starting with a lowercase value, or first underscore name, last underscore name, both would be fine. Just be consistent so other people can read your code and you can understand your code. For comments, what we expect. I expect maybe your name, the course number, the date, the description of the file at the top. Normally it's something that's meaningful so that when somebody else looks at it, you know exactly what it's for. Three years from now, when you look at your code, you go to your assignment three project and it says bit 1400 assignment three and I know exactly what it's for. Oh, and it's calculating the average. Great. I know what this fun I know what this code is doing. I don't have to look at the code to understand it. I know what it is because it says it at the top. It's the title of my book. Before each function, a little description. 
And one or two lines is fine. Normally I say what the input is, what the output is, what the function does. I want it to be so that nobody has to read your damn function. No one wants to read your function. You're not going to read my, you don't read half the things I write. I'm going to generalize based on my previous students, right? Most you know, students do not read everything I write. They skim, they scan, they barely look at it. And then they go, what's the purpose of, the, you know, some of them go, what's the purpose of the assignment? You want something that it's, I don't want to be looking through every last line of your code to figure out what you're doing. You should have a little statement saying, this is what this thing does. Not, well, you have to, you know, I have to read, spend 20 minutes to read this thing to figure out what the heck it does. It should be a short and sweet, this is what this function is. The purpose statement. This is what I'm doing here. Those function comments are extremely useful. The name of the function is extremely useful. So make sure that your functions, your functions and variables are named correctly and you have some kind of comments. And in the function, you need comments to figure out what the heck's going on. You do not need a functions for this, right? Int red val is equal to x plus 5. Change red val to x plus 5. Well, it was clearly in the code. I don't need to do that, right? Declare a variable red val of a type to int, right? No, I do not need that. There's no point if it's not helping me in any way, shape, or form, get rid of it. So I like to think of it like math and recipes. If it's not clear to a reasonable human, then you need a comment. If it is, then you take it out, right? I don't need to explain every line of a math proof, but if there's, I'm doing something really weird, there should be a comment. If it's a recipe and it says, make a bit, you know, uh, my recipe for chicken pot pie is not step one, make chicken pot pie, step two, put in oven, right? A reasonable amount, but how to use a knife to chop carrots no, you do not need to have, you know, have a full description of how to chop carrots. A reasonable sh human looking at this, would they understand what you're trying to do there? So I'm going to throw another quiz there involving a comments, because that would be fun. And now we're going to get to scanf and printf. So try the quiz right now. You have a week after, after this gets posted online. So try the quiz right now and see how you, well you do. Okay, so printing information. I ideally, one of the best ways of debugging my code, if I don't know what's going on, is just to print stuff to the screen. See what the, the code does. One thing is to look at the data, but another thing is to print to the, to the screen. So I need some quick and dirty way of taking my program and just and putting information to the screen. I want to be able to just send a message to print or print F. Uh, and so we need a library to do that. And that's what we're going to be looking at very quickly. So here is, this is a bad code example. I like pointing out that it's a bad code example. Um, because quite frankly, um, the reason it's a bad code example is I'm going to be taking input with that scanf. It is going to take in two ver integers, right here, right here. It's going to be putting in the into variable i and j. I'm going to take in input from the user. They're going to type it on a keyboard. And that first number that they type in is going to go here, the first D, and or it's going to go stored in variable I. And the second variable is going to be stored, uh, the thing that they type in is going to be stored in J. The reason this is a bad example, and I'll show you the, exa the better example in a second, is because I didn't tell them what they needed to type in. I just left them hanging, and hopefully they type some numbers. And by the way, this and in front, this ampersand in front, for right now, we can consider it magic. When we get to it later, when we look at pointers, we'll realize what the heck that is. For now, if I have an integer or a short or a character or some, something other than a string, I will be using, I'll put an and in front of it in order to store values in i or to store values in j. We'll see it later, but for now, you'll just have to put, you'll have to take it on faith. That's why you have to put an and. Okay, this thing will take in scanf, will take in user input for two different numbers. Another reason it's a bad example is because I never scanf more than one number at a time. The reason, because I'm really, uh, maybe dim is the pro proper term. I don't like remembering, oh, I need to remember that I have to put two numbers here. I want to put one number, ask for input put another number, ask for input. 
put each number in separately. Debugging this thing is a real pain if you don't do it right. So I don't do multiple numbers at once, I do one at a time. So scanf takes an in input, it will take in user typed in values for two numbers. And then printf will output three, in this case, three different numbers in a message. It will be a number here, a number here with a percentage D, and a number here. And what corresponds with them? It is this goes to the first one, this goes to the second one, this goes to the third one. And then a new line. That's what that slash n is. That new line character that we talked about last time. So this thing will print off number plus the other number you typed in is equal to, and then the sum of the two numbers, new line. The re and so here is the better enter two integer numbers, right? And so you're waiting for the person to put in two integer numbers. If I don't put that printf statement, you're just waiting around with no no indicator of what the person needs to do. The person runs your program, they get this blank screen, they don't know what to do. They don't know if they have to put in two numbers. Tell them to put in two numbers. Okay. So I'm going to out I'm going to take in a value for i, take in a value for j. Notice scanf, something important to note about scanf, it cannot take in anything other than these percentage d's or percentage symbols or white spaces. So I can put a tab, I can put a carriage return, I can put, you know, a space, but I cannot put a message in my scanf. It takes in stuff, it does not output stuff. Printf outputs stuff based off of, and it inserts like the value i will be inserted wherever this percentage d is. The value j gets inserted in this place. i plus j gets inserted at with a percentage d. And the message goes out. So do I have, um, so let's, let's say that I input, oh, we can actually run this thing if we wanted to. Do I have, I wonder if I have an example of it. Let me do the next slide and then we'll maybe run an example. See if I have a live example that I can show you. That percentage part is a format for the string. It allows you to say, I'm going to insert something in here, or I'm going to get information from the user or put information to the screen here. So I have a percentage D. It says, put a decimal number, or a percentage I does the same thing. Put an integer there. Percentage F, put a floating point number there. Percentage C, put a character in there. The weird one here is percentage s. Percentage s says put a string here. Actually, I already had that, so let's let's just put a oh, put a string here. That's the odd one out. We can look at this in a in a second. And oh, I didn't go over this uh, uh, before. So, and we also have this weird other convention where if I need a new line, I can't put a, a enter in there, I might actually want a new line some other way. I cannot type in a tab. I could push the button, but that maybe I actually wanted a tab for formatting my code. What I need is some way to type or to put in non-typable characters into my string, like a tab, like a new line, like um, horizontal indentation, like there's a couple other things. So slash n will give me a new line, slash for n for new line, slash t for a tab. If you don't know which, you can look it up, but most of the time it's slash n and slash t for us. It allows us to put in non-typable characters. So how would you type in a slash then? If the slash is used for slash n, what happens if I just put a slash? What if I wanted to put slash and then a t afterwards? How would I put that in? Like, literally want the message being slash t is how I put it in a tab. How would I put that in there? Well, if slash is an escape character, call an escape character, it says, look at this slash, whatever is afterwards is something special, put in that special character. That's what this is saying. So, whatever is after is something special. That n, oh, it's a special, this is special, this is a new line. Slash, oh, whatever is afterwards, something special, oh, it's a tab. It allows me to do special character by using an escape sequence. So how would I put in a slash? Some of you may have figured it out. 
I found it fascinating. Yeah, it's it's this. <laughs> slash special character, and the special character is the slash character. Okay, so backslash backslash is the special character for backslash. Uh, in case you don't realize where this comes in, if you've ever done any HTML, you've seen this kind of thing before. When you need a special character for a carriage return, or if you need a special character for uh, a question mark, or a special character for there's a bunch of different characters you can't you can't just type in. Um, so we're going to also use scanf. Scan the scanf underscore s is the new approach to doing input and output from the user. Um, it's a more secure way of doing it. I got to look it up every single time, despite all this time. This is one of those things I would put on my cheat sheet personally. The reason it's special, you need a special way of doing it now versus before, is because they realize that there's a security vulnerability when you use a scanf. People can do stuff to your code that you don't want them to do. And so scanf underscore s is a new way of doing it. Okay. And again, just to remind you, uh, if you're looking, if you're using cout and cn statements, we are not doing those. This is what a cout statement looks like, but we're not touching this stuff. A C in and a C out. So do I have a mouse there? There we go. A C in would say take input from the user and put it into my var, and a C out would say take information for the uh, you know take this string and output it to the screen. It looks all simple, but how does it work? Well, that's a big op you know that's a very complicated question, and so I didn't want to be getting into that. That we didn't want to get into the can of worms, and on top of that, it's it's C plus plus is not C. What I want to make sure is that you learn how, what pure C is. We want to reduce cheating, of course, and quite frankly, it's useful to know multiple approaches. It's useful to know Python and C. It's useful to know C++ and C and Java and other languages. It's useful to have different approaches to doing the same thing, and then you can choose later. But we want to show you, we, we want to expose you to different approaches, and so we're banning C out and CN for now, at least. Okay, and so. I'm going to go over um, a live example in a second. Um, so it would be useful if you wanted to try some of these out for for future practice. Maybe figure out, maybe write some code that will calculate the uh, area and the circumference of a circle, maybe the area of a rectangle, the area of a square, area of a triangle, uh, figure out the GPA of a student with five different grades. Right? What's their grade point average or what's their average? Uh, maybe figure out what the y value of a line is given an input x, an input m, and, an, and a b. Right? Once you have c out, uh, once you have printf, once you have scanf, and once you have mathematical operations, you can do all of these things. You just have a variable for m, a variable for x that you get from the user, a variable for b, and then it spits out what the y value is. So you can play with this. There's all sorts of different practice problems you can do. And I don't know if I have one other one, and then we'll we'll actually look at live code in a second. Um, so we're going to look at so, uh, very briefly at an, an external library. We're going to look at input and output. We've even done some. There should be a math library that we're. I'm not sure we're doing the full math library yet. But when we come back next time, we're going to be looking at functions, and then we're going to look at conditions, which is true and false. Like, go in here if this is true. This true or false statement uh, approach to control of our program. Then we're going to look at loops and then we're going to look at structs. So those are the next things coming up for us. Okay, but I want to get to I'm going to keep this and we're going to look at some live code. So let's have a look at here's my hello world. Um, there we have an example of this. How are you? The sum, no, sum of two numbers is this. Notice I've already done one example of this. The sum of two numbers is this, but I want to take some other numbers. So average float um, Let's do this. Please enter three. I always wonder if I spell, spell separator wrong. Um, by and I oh well, I wanted a new line, so I put a slash n in here. This will output something onto a new line, and it's going to put out this message and put make a new line. And I'm going to put a, also a colon afterwards just to indicate that you can type some more stuff. Okay, I'm going to put the three different numbers in here. So uh, float 
of num1 is equal, uh, let's put that there. Actually, I'm going to just do it this way. So lazy. Okay. Um, now, next up, I'm going to get. I can use a scanf, but I'm probably going to have to use underscore s. So the way that scanf would work is I'd have something like percentage uh, f for floating point number, average num1, and I'm going to need to put a pointer in the front, and it would look something like this. This will get a new no scanf number. I could call that three times, or I can put it in one thing. But I like doing it in three different cases, just in case something went wrong. Somewhere along the lines, I can debug it a bit easier. Okay, this will take three floating point numbers. It'll put it into average number one, average number two, average number three. And then I'm going to put these numbers in here. Uh, nope, I don't want that. I have num three. All right, I'll take in three numbers. It's going to spit out what the average number, uh, floating number point number is, and I'm going to. I've uh, let's change this one here. The um, so actually, let's just comment this out. And I'm going to put it up here actually. So print f floats, and let's put the floats back in. What the heck? Oh, what do, do I want the I want the average float? Great as and average float should be not a sum. Uh, should not be. Oh, that's gonna. Average float divided by three, so let's put that in there. Um, I'm going to need this is f. Great. I'm going to put a new line at the end just to show that I'm on the new line. Okay. In order, I'm going to be putting in one number, another number, another number. And then my answer. I need to put in four different val values after this because it's going to put the first number I put in here in the first percent f, the second number I put in there in the second percent f, third and third, fourth and fourth. Right? It matches. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to put in uh, f1, f2, f3, and then, oh, that's av, oh, av num, av. There we go, that's what the difference is. Notice I'm off the line here. I don't want, look, I'm going to want line wrap if I ever printed this off or someone else is looking at this. I'm going to put it over here. F2, great. So I can span multiple lines on this one printf statement as long as the string is not broken. It's going to take this thing, it's going to be av number one. Take this thing, it's going to be av number two. All the way down to here, which is going to be average 2, which is this value here for my average floating uh, floating point. I want the floating point two, uh, 1, actually. There we go. I want this one up here. Okay. And here's our scanf. Notice I have a slight difference between the, the between printf and scanf. For printf, I just put the number. For scanf, I need this ampersand in there because I can't change the value otherwise. Again, this is a bit magic for right now. Scanf requires me to put an ampersand in front because I'm not sure what's going to happen. Okay, uh, I'm also going to do, let's do this. Let's change one more thing, and I'm going to say a constant character pointer. Um, have message, let's just call it have message. Let's see how that works. And it's not auto formatting for, properly for me. Here we go. Let's see if that's going to work. And I'm going to put a percentage s just to show you how that's going to work. And let's put my av message. So I'm going to put my string. 
then a float, then a float, then a float, then a float. String, float, 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 float. Okay, that should work. Next up, what do I want to do with this thing? I'm going to compile it. I'm going to probably get some errors. Let's see what those errors are. If I don't get an error, well, there you go. Scanf is being barfed at. Okay, uh, return value is ignored for scanf. I want to do... So scanf is actually going to return some kind of value. I should have a scanf underscore s. Underscore s. Let's see what the underscore s will actually do for us. And scanf underscore s. That's the secure version of scanf. And it's probably going to yell at me. So let's figure out what, what it's going to yell at me for. It's going to take one number. It's going to take one. Scan F, unfortunately. Under, uh, scan F underscore S. One of the fields you can pass into it is how big is, like if I'm dealing with a string, I need to know how big the string is that I'm put, putting information into. Because I'm just dealing with numbers, I can ju I'm just essentially putting in one number. So the underscore S version of it, and i got to double check it. I'll find out the hard way when I, when I put a breakpoint on this. Uh, when I hit this, we'll see if this crashes on us. But it's saying I'm going to take this. I'm going to take. Um, I'm going to input a number in here. How many numbers am I putting in there, or how many? How big is this array? It's size one, right? It's I'm only filling in one number. Let's see if I have this. Extreme pass scan if not used by this. Uh, huh. So it's saying this not the extra argument is not being used by the string format. I may not actually need it at all. So let's let's remove it and see what happens. Because it knows it's taking in a floating point number, not an integer. Uh, sorry, not a string. I don't have another parameter to go in. Oh, that's good to know. Again, if you get stuck on something, look at what the output is and see what how you can debug it. Because this is something I have learned about a thousand times, and I always forget it. It's all good. It's not all good, but it's one of those things I'm actually trying to imitate what actually I go through when I code, which is I don't always know what this function will do, or I always I sometimes forget. And I can look at what this thing says. It's going to return an, integ an integer. The function name scanf. This is a constant character with this uh, of a particular format, and then I'll have a bunch of fields afterwards for the values I'm going to be putting in. There is exactly one field putting in here, so this I only exactly have one parameter afterwards. And since it's a floating point number, I don't have to say how big the array is. Is what the problem is what we're doing. Okay, so let's find out. Hopefully it's going to work. Okay, let's go to the next line and see. Oh, I need to put a number here. So uh, 3.0. For, oh, it's going to go to the next line. Let's just continue. There we go. Uh, 3.0. Let's make sure it works. If I have three threes, the average should be three, right? Hopefully. And let, the average floats for three, three, and three is three. Hello, world. How are you? Great. Let's try it again. I still have that breakpoint. So continue. Um, 3.0, 4.0, 0, 5.0. That should be an average of 4 when I'm done. The floats are 3, 4, 5, and the average is 4. I could have put a breakpoint right here and see, to see what what's actually going to end up happening here. Notice the average of your floats is put in here, right here this message, then the first number, then the second number, then the third number, in that order, and then the total that it's actually calculated, the average it's actually calculating, which is calculated right here. So this is me using scanf and printf, the safe version of scanf no less, and printf. When we talk about strings, we'll look at uh, scanf with text a bit more. Let's see if I can put, I'll put, I'll, I won't, um, leave you high and dry here yet so let's let's have a chance let's have a look at this so um, my message and that size 40 so this is going to be an array of characters that I can make scan F underscore s and then I can put into my message I'm going to put in a 
my message and that's size 40 and I don't need the ampersand in this one particular case hopefully and then I'm going to print out oh by the way slash quote slash quote I can put in if I don't know how to type in something like a like a quote the slash the escape key back in action all right and slash uh, was typed slash n all right so I'm going to put quote the text I typed end quote was typed new line and then I need to put the type the quote the text that I typed a my message in here this is what's called a text string. It is a bunch of, it's 40 different characters. It's a group of 40 characters that I can put information in. That's what this thing is. I'm going to put a text message in this group of 40 different characters. Uh, and then it's going to be output. Okay. And I want to have one more message. Print F. Please type in um, 40 or um, a less than 40 character message. I should put something like that in there. All right. And I want a new line as well. So, oops. All right. Let's have a let's run this and see what happens. Please enter uh, three point four numbers by spaces. Three. Let's do three 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 again. Uh, hello world because that's my go-to all right and let's see what I get to this average float point I'm at another breakpoint so let's see what it typed hello oh was typed well, what happened there there is something interesting that happened there I completely forgot about this but it's an interesting little thing I typed hello world important thing to note about scanf what happened with scanf when I put I said to put three floating point numbers separated by spaces why because scanf gets to the next space and then stops the wor the wor word world that I typed in there is not being recorded at all and therefore only the word hello was being recorded and stored in that message so let's do one more let's run finish it, all this up let's run it again and I'll try something different just in case you don't believe me so I'm gonna write hello world but I'm not gonna write hello world the way I did before hello world put an underscore in there so there's no white space in there so what I'm expecting is scanf is gonna get the entire message now not just the first word when I got to the white space it stopped picking up the text that's what scanf does it goes to the next white space and then stops whether it's a number or it's a string. Now the white space is the whole thing, hello world. And if I go back to what my message looks like, it's hello world was typed. That's what the difference with scanf is. It goes to a white space and I've completely, I it slipped my mind. And it was a good demonstration of one of the problems with scanf or one of the limitations. If you have multiple words you want to pull in, you have to do something special to get multiple messages in. Okay, we will look at that when we look at strings. All right, I can finish that off. So when we come back next time, we're going to deep dive into functions because although their previous iterations of the class have not you know, really stressed functions that much, they are so fundamental to programming. They're so fundamental to C that there are actual languages, programming languages out there that only have functions. They do not have variables at all. You, well, sort of, you cannot store a variable. You just have functions. Functions are very, very important to computer science. So I want to make sure we emphasize them and so that it's very clear what they actually are and why they're useful for your programming when you're first learning. So next time around, functions. Very important lecture. All right. Thanks, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.